So Adobe just announced that they're integrating generative AI into Photoshop. This is a quick video to show you that, put it to the test and get the conversation going about this tool. This is not one more video on how this AI tool is gonna make you lose your job and change the world. No, I mean, most of you already seen the power of Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion and all of that, right? Yeah, they are cool and all, but I haven't yet seen a practical use for architectural representation and visualization. Well, from everyone I talked to, these tools are still limited to the first steps of a design process or even more of a inspirational resource. I know it's only a matter of time until it gets to the render engines or other software, which is sort of what's already happening here. So let's take a look at the generative fill in Photoshop. This is a tool we can already integrate into an existing practical workflow. And later in this video, I'll talk a bit more about why I feel this is finally a major move for us and also one more practical example. So here in Photoshop, you get this contextual text bar. By the way, this is still in beta version and if you wanna get your hands on it, you need to go to the Creative Cloud under the beta apps. Now here's this interior render that I did a while back. Let's say for example that I wanted to add a concrete face with a plant here next to the TV. Sure, I could open back the 3D model, model the face and render it all again to then import here and reapply all of the post-production I had done. Sure. Or I can create a new selection on this area. It doesn't have to be too exact. Then this button called Generative Fill will appear. Click on it and type whatever you need. Concrete face with a plant. Hit generate and wait a few seconds. Well, it does take a little bit to process. Then, ta-da, pretty cool, right? It has three variations to choose from or you can generate a whole new set if none of the options suit you. I mean, we cannot control the specifics of the object that much and in an architectural workflow, you kind of need to have control over that because in this very specific example, the vase that you add to the project matter. But I mean, it can be useful for quick fixes or tests. And this is just one example. Now here for another one. I can add a person sitting here in this area. And as with most AI tools, creating realistic people is not easy. Sometimes they come out kind of scary. Okay, one more example. Let's say we didn't have the time to render the water in this indoor pool here. So select it with Photoshop selection tool and type what you need. And it even got the reflections as it's supposed to. The official Adobe page has a few suggestions on how to utilize the tool. For example, you don't have to worry too much about writing add or remove, but rather just write what you wanna see. For example, let's swap this iPad setup here for some books. The scale is totally off, but I mean, this is kind of interesting. It reacted to the existing light perfectly. The new generative fill can generate objects as we just did, but it can also generate backgrounds, which I don't see being too useful for real architectural projects. We shall see where this takes us. I mean, possibly to generate new skies, but this kind of already existed in previous versions. Swapping skies is something that I always do with the renderers, but I usually spend a lot of time searching for the perfect sky to bring that exact mood in an image. I don't see how this could be actually useful, yet I might be wrong. Then, extend images is another feature of the generative fill, and this is fantastic. I mean, the content aware feel was already amazing for this kind of stuff, but you sort of had the limit of what was in your document. You sampled existing pixels to generate new areas. But with the generative feel, this is just taken to the next level. We get the crop tool, extend the canvas, and let's say to this side here, I'm gonna create a new layer, select this area, and simply hit generate. Look at this, I can already see how this can be useful in so many parts of a post-production workflow. Well, any workflow using Photoshop for sure, but here I'm with the mindset of visualization and representation. Now also included in this new tool is the Remove Objects. It's located right here alongside the bended area. In reality, it's just a really powerful eraser. Imagine the generative fill combined with the clone stamp combined with the content aware fill. You just simply paint over the area or the object you'd like to remove and let Photoshop do its magic. You might need to run this multiple times on some occasions, but how fantastic is this? I'm kind of excited that this has been implemented in Photoshop. I cannot wait to see where this takes us. So here are a few important things to consider. The generative fill uses Adobe Firefly as the engine, which is trained using Adobe stock assets. This helps ensure Firefly won't generate content based on other people's work, 
brands or intellectual property, which is a big deal when thinking about using any other AI image generator, not only regarding commercial use, but also ethically, you know, so that you know no artists are being sampled or copied without their consent. And also the best part for me is that now this is indeed a practical use where it seamlessly integrates into our workflow. We can take what's being generated by Firefly and use Photoshop's tools to further enhance and tweak it. So far, Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey were standalone type of tools that despite giving you a lot of creative and creative, I mean, flexibility, they were only based on prompts and they were just that. I mean, this is evolving so quickly that by the time you watch this video, I might be outdated already. But that's why we've got the comments section. I'd love to hear your input as well. A note on this, there's this guy I follow on Instagram, I think it's called Wilfro, where he posted about using stable diffusion with control net to generate different styles of renderings. It was purely based on clay model render, if I'm not mistaken, quite interesting. He does also visualization and be sure to check it out if you're interested. This is possibly where the rendering industry will go. Now to conclude all of this, at least for now, the generative fill tool from Adobe is far from ideal or developed enough. I mean, it's very limiting in so many aspects. I just showed you a tiny, tiny example of all of this. It's completely new and I'm looking forward to exploring this a lot more. But from my perspective, I would say it's a step in the right direction. If there's any decent direction in all of this, I mean, it's an unstoppable evolution, but at least it's a lot different from what we've seen so far with the whole AI prompt artists, which personally is nonsense for me. Look, I don't want this video to have the wrong impression on you guys. I'm not saying that Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey are not amazing tools as they are. It's just like, it's a very controversial topic, I guess. But I'm really excited about this new tool in Photoshop. As I said during the video, it's not totally there, not developed enough. And with a few more tests while I was editing the video, I saw that um, it's not as powerful as Mid Journey, Stable Diffusion, and all of those others that you guys know. But still, I think being integrated in Photoshop is what makes it really powerful, especially for us that do visualization, representation, and all things related to architecture, which having a tool like this can drastically improve our workflow and we can still maintain control over what's being created. Anyways, are you looking to test this new feature? Does it make sense at all for you? I'll see you guys in the next one. And also be sure to follow Learn Upstairs on Instagram because we're posting a lot more over there, like behind the scenes, new rules, so you don't want to miss out.